The goal of this video is to provide an intuitive understanding of the numerical values inside a rotation matrix. We'll be doing so by taking a look at and analyzing a principal axis rotation about the z-axis. So specifically, we'll be going over intuitively why plugging in angles for theta from 0 to 360 degrees into this rotation matrix produces this animation of rotations about the z-axis. So the fifth video in the series, in this one, I'm going to be going over rotation matrix calculations intuition. We're going to take a look at a pure Z rotation. So for the diagrams, this will look like a 2D rotation for now. So again, we have the original reference frame in blue, the rotated reference frame in pink, rotated about some angle theta in green. From this, we are interested in figuring out what the new coordinates are of the pink frame with respect to the blue frame in order to be able to analyze this rotation. So basically, we want to figure out the xy coordinates of this rotated x prime vector and this rotated y prime vector. And to do this, we'll focus on the x axis only for now, and then we'll get into the y axis later. So we can create a triangle from the previous diagram in order to be able to calculate what the coordinates of the rotated x-axis are. So first we have to recall that all vectors in these diagrams have a length of 1, which is usually the case when you're forming basis vectors. So what that means is that this vector, this vector, this vector, and this vector, every single one of them has a magnitude of 1. So from trigonometry, we know that the height of this rotated vector, given by this white line, is equal to 1 times the sine of theta, and the horizontal distance from the origin to the projection of the x, this rotated x vector down to here in the original x vector, this length is equal to 1 times the cosine of theta. So this means that the x-coordinate of the x-rotated vector is equal to cosine theta, and the y-coordinate of the rotated vector is equal to sine theta. So now you might be able to begin to see how these trigonometric functions and this type of analysis will apply into why this rotation looks the way it does. So now let's take a look at specifically how a rotation matrix can be used to describe this rotation. So in this matrix vector multiplication equation, we have three components, which are first the coordinates of the vector before it was rotated. So in this case, we are rotating the x basis vector, which means that its coordinates are 1, 0, 0. Again, this will give a length of 1 for this vector, just taking the norm of a 1, 0, 0 vector. We also have the coordinates of the vector after it was rotated, which is cosine theta, sine theta, and 0. And again, notice if you take the sum of the norms and take the square root of this, it's going to be equal to 1 because cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. That's a trigonometric identity. And the third component is a rotation matrix that corresponds to, the, to this z-axis rotation. So first, let's go over the numerical calculation, and then we'll cover why the rotation matrix is formulated like this. So in order to be able to calculate what this is using this rotation matrix and this vector, we just go through the procedure of doing matrix vector multiplication, which involves just going across the row of the matrix and down the column of the vector. So you have that this first component is going to be equal to cosine theta times 1, which is cosine theta, plus negative sine theta times 0, which is 0, plus 0 times 0, which is 0, which gives cosine of theta, just like that. And then to go on to the second value, we're going to do sine theta times 1 equals sine theta plus cosine theta times 0, 0, plus 0 times 0, 0. So that gives sine of theta. And then for the last value here, we just have 1 times 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So that's just 0. So that is how you calculate the matrix vector multiplication. And now notice that because we're doing this rotation and we're rotating the original x-axis 1, 0, 0, this value is actually exactly the same thing as the first column of this matrix. Now this isn't a coincidence because this is actually how you form a rotation matrix. It's basically saying where do the basis vectors go after applying this rotation? And those three vectors are going to be the three columns inside the rotation matrix. Now, I think this will be a little bit more clear when I show the next slide where we'll go into the exact same thing and looking at how this, trying to find the coordinates, calculating the coordinates of this rotated y vector. 
So here we're going to take a look at how to calculate the coordinates of this new y rotated vector, which again, we're going to use the same rotation matrix because this is encoding the same rotation about the z-axis. The only thing we're going to change is that we're going to plug in 0, 1, 0, which corresponds to the y-axis base vector. And we're going to see how that comes up with this value. So again, just doing the matrix vector multiplication, we get cosine theta times 0, 0 plus negative sine theta times one is negative sine, zero times zero is zero, you get negative sine. Next one, we go sine theta times zero is zero, cosine theta times one is cosine theta, plus zero times zero is zero, so you get cosine theta, and same thing, all zeros for the last one. And again, I want you to see that this column is equal to this column, because that what that's what the rotation matrix says, is that if you apply this rotation, where do the basis vectors go? So for the y-axis, when you apply this rotation, it will go to here, which corresponds to coordinates of negative sine theta. And notice it's negative because this is x-axis pointing to the right, and it's on the left side, and then cosine theta is the height of it. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hit like and subscribe if you liked the video to help me out with YouTube algorithm. And also let me know in the comments if you found anything confusing slash if you have any questions or comments because it's very important that you get the little nuances of this in order to be truly able to understand what rotation matrices are and then build onto more complex topics in the future as the prince all three principal axes rotations that I will show in the next video. And then building on top of that, Euler angles, quaternions, and then just rotations in general. It's really important that you get all the little details details right in order to be able to understand higher and more sophisticated topics which are very exciting to learn about such as spacecraft attitude control which again this series or these few videos in the numerical method series are building up to as a prerequisites for the spacecraft attitude control series.